Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and let's make an armrest caddy. Now this is going to be very handy if you love to do some stitching while you're sitting on the couch or a nice big armchair. We have one big pocket on one side, we have five pockets on the other side, and an area where we can put all the different spools of thread. It's going to have a little bit of an extra ribbon on it so we can keep track of those scissors so they don't end up between the couch cushions. So let's start with the measurements and the materials we're going to need. This is going to have some batting in it or you can use a foam product. This foam or batting needs to be 10 inches by 21 inches. And you're going to need the same size 10 inches by 21 inches for the back. On the right side we're going to need pockets and additional fabric. One piece 10 inches by 11 inches. The other piece 10 inches by 17 inches. That is going to be the top side. We're going to have pockets on each side. On one side we're going to have a really big pocket so we're going to start with a piece of fabric 10 inches by 13 and a half inches and take that fabric and press it in half so that it fits that one side. We're going to have two more pockets on the other side. So we're going to start with the biggest one and it also is going to be 10 inches by 11 inches. And when that's pressed and folded in half, it's going to go on that side. The smallest pocket is 10 inches by 8 inches. Again, we're going to press that in half. This is how it's going to be laid out. You're going to need some binding to go around the outside and some ribbon. And with this ribbon, it's going to be used to tie your scissors on and tie spools of thread on. This little black piece is a coffee stir stick. So it's a very small, strong straw. And you're going to need to cut them at about two inches and then put that little straw on the middle of a very thin ribbon. This ribbon and straw is going to have to go through a spool of thread. So to test it before you make it, put the ribbon in the straw and then that straw should be able to go through and come out the other side. So it doesn't matter what spool you're going to need, it's going to have to be able to fit. I'm going to do three different size ribbons, but you can do them all the same. I have a 14 inch, 15 inch, and a 16 inch. Another piece of ribbon is going to be at a yard and a half. And this you can adjust to what size you would like. Now we're going to be able to sew these together. The first thing we're going to do is work on this double pocket. So we have both pieces that are folded in half and pressed. We need to have a couple of marks on the side pockets. That way we can have some large pockets and some small pockets. On that smallest piece, once it's been folded in half and pressed, draw a line down the center, which means you're going to be at a five inch mark. On the larger one, you're going to fold it in half and with that fold up at the top go in three and a half inches and draw a line. Take the small pocket and put it right on top of the top pocket matching up those raw edges and pin them down and do a row of stitching following that five inch center line and I like to do a back stitch here just to keep it strong. So the bottom is not stitched down we just have that stitch line down the center put this aside so we can work on the body. With those three small pieces of ribbon, I've put in this straw. And that's going to help the spool of thread stay on and it'll make it easy to change the spools of thread. So you'll just need a very thin ribbon and once that little straw is put on, match up the tops. For that inside piece, we have two different sizes. We're going to work on that small size which is the 10 inch by 11 inches. Take the ribbon and pin it onto the top in three different areas. And you can put it on whatever measurement you want. With that long yard and a half ribbon, take it and fold in half and pin those two edges up at the top. So you're going to have all four of those ribbons coming from that one edge. And that is one of the 10 inch measurements. So this is the 11 inch by 10 inch. Just do a little row of stitching on each of these tops 
to hold them down so as we're stitching we won't have to worry about them. When the ribbons have been stitched on, you're going to be able to stitch the two tops together. Just make sure all of the ribbon is out of the way and stitch a quarter inch right down that center. So you're going to have that bottom piece bigger than the top piece. Before we sew the top piece on, we're going to put the bottom on. So the bottom is the same size. I'm going to put just a couple of little dollops of glue just to hold that backing on. Even though I can still use pins, it's just going to help it from not shifting. Since we're not washing this, it's just going to be easy just to put a couple of marks, line it up, and let that glue dry. Or if you have a glue you can iron, you can iron it so that it's just going to hold it on. And we don't need a lot of glue. Now we're going to be able to work on the other side. The top side is a lot bigger than the foam or the batting. Place the smallest piece down first, matching up those edges. Make sure your ribbons are out of the way. Fold that top piece back right over top of that smaller piece. So you'll be able to see your stitching line. And stitch right over top of that stitching line, going through all three layers. You can add some pins just to hold this down now. When that seam has been stitched, you're going to be able to take that other edge and match it so that the raw edges are matching up. And you're going to have this loop right here in the center. Smooth your fabric down, making sure that your ribbons are out of the way, and pin this loop so it's lying over top. We're going to be able to turn this over and stitch following that stitching line right down that center. When we flip it over, we're going to have this big loop in the center. Hold it in half so the center of this area is going to hit the center of that seam. And it doesn't have to be exact. This is going to become the pin cushion. So for now, we're going to just pin it down so that it stays where we need it to be. We get to add the pockets on now. I like to put the two sets of pockets on the side that has the ribbon. And I already have them stitched together with that seam down the center. Match up the raw edges and only pin down that bottom pocket. So you're going to have this flap. Once you have this pinned down, you're going to be able to stitch right over top of that line that you drew that was three and a half inches over. So you're going to stitch this line, move the pocket to the other side, and stitch this line. And once those sides are going to be stitched down, we now have three pockets in that bottom one. This top one will be a pocket for two. You could do a small row of stitching all the way around to hold those flaps down so they don't get in your way. On the one side, we now have the three small pockets and two medium pockets. We we'll put the next pocket on the other side. This pocket is 10 inches by 13 and a half inches, but you can make it as deep as you want. Just take that and fold it right in half and press it. I like to have one big pocket, so if I want to put some papers in here that I can, the rest is going to be for smaller tools like my scissors or rulers. So I'm going to pin that on and stitch the pocket on. Once all the sides have been stitched down, we're going to be able to work on the center area, which is going to be the pin cushion. So close off one side. So just stitch down here at a scant quarter inch. With that one side closed, we're going to be able to stuff it right here in the center. I like to do my pin cushion, so I'm going to have a little bit of a polyfill or some kind of a stuffing on each of the ends. And then in the center, have something like a walnut shell. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some of this stuffing and put it right to the end. Get a ruler, just stick it down. I can now fill the center part with that walnut shell. Once the walnut shells are in there, I'm going to finish stuffing it with the batting. I like to have a batting on each side for a couple of reasons. Number one, I won't have to worry about breaking my machine needle as I stitch through this. And I still have a little bit of weight right there at the arm. So push some batting out of the way, fold this down, and stitch that piece. You will not have to stuff this too tight because you're going to want it to be able to maintain this round shape to go over the armchair. 
and if it's too tight, it's not going to fold as nicely. We get to put binding on. Before you put binding on, just take your batting and shove it right up inside and put a couple of pins so that you have a flat area to work with. You're going to be able to push that batting back after. It's just going to be easier with this not in your way and this nice and flat. And I'm going to do that to both sides. You can run over the batting. It's just easier if it's flatter. And add the binding on just like you would a quilt. When the binding is done, you have a quick and easy armrest. Let me show you how to use these little ends with the straws on them. So we have that straw on that loop. What you're going to do is use it like a sewing needle. So you can insert it inside of your spool of thread. And even with a little push, it's going to be very easy to take that out. Now there's two ways you can use this. You can just straighten up the end, and what happens is it becomes like a plug, so it's not going to go anywhere. Or, you can take this and just wrap it around the spool of thread, so it holds it another way. So it will fit different size spools. This extra long piece, you're going to be able to take that end, which is a loop, put it into one of the little holes for your hand, and then just Place that loop around the entire pair of scissors and when you pull it, it's going to hold that one handle for you. So now that pair of scissors is on a long ribbon so you don't lose it in between the couch cushions. So it looks nice from both sides and even the back looks nice. And all it took was that one seam stitched three times. I have found that this 10 inch is a good size for an arm. Now sometimes the arm rests are very big or they're tall so you can make the sides bigger. Instead of making it 21 inches you can make it 24, 25, as long as you want. You just have to have it comfortable for you to reach into as you're sewing. This is a great gift if you happen to know someone who does some hand sewing. Thank you for joining me today on Sew Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.